triumphs for when you stand undefeated every battle you won I am who you say I am you crown me with confidence I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all now I can finally see it you're teaching me how to receive it so let all the striving cease this is my victory you are my champion giants for when you stand undefeated every battle you won i am who you say i am you crowd me with confidence i am seated And I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles start breaking out I have the Jesus has given me when I lift my voice and shout every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me when I open up my mouth miracles start breaking I have the authority Jesus has given me You are my champion Giants for when you stand undefeated Every battle you won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence undefeated by the power of your name I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it Good evening, guys. I am Brian Jody. I'm the college pastor here at a and United Methodist Church. I'd like to welcome you to worship tonight. Uh, I, my throat hurts. That's why I'm talking like this. I'm not as loud as I usually am. Um, but uh, one of the things that we do uh, here, uh, every we try to do every worship, um, is to have a student moment where uh, they have saw, they have seen God uh, this past week. Um, and we have a student this week. I was just informed I should introduce myself. Hi, if you don't know me, I am Avery Lehman. Um, <laughs> I've been here a little bit. This is my last semester here, so really happy to see you all. Um, so. My moments are a little bit selfish because they, they apply just to me, but uh, the places that I've seen Jesus in my life recently, um, this has been a really tough semester for me, 
and like I I lost my job and so I was like stressed about finding one and then um, out of nowhere I just applied for this job that I didn't think I would get but I was offered a job in Houston so I've been working um, in Houston on Fridays now they they actually offered me to like work remotely while I'm still in college um, and then work in person on Fridays and then um, I have a job for after graduation so I'm, I'm moving to Houston next semester and so like it's been a huge blessing yeah <laughs> And another moment that I saw Jesus today, or I felt like Jesus was working in my favor today, um, I'm in a class that is um, photography in the Hispanic world, and it's completely in Spanish. Um, and usually, and I had a presentation today, and usually the teacher just like roast the heck out of us. Like, and so I was like really worried about getting up there because I was like, <laughs> I'm doing this in another language, and I'm having to like take photos and present them to the class and like explain these like complex like concepts in Spanish. And she told me my photos were buenísimo. And so I was like, whoa, like so it's been it's been a good day. It's been a good semester, but that's where I've seen Jesus. <laughs> chances, chances looking for it. Oh no. Continue worshiping with me. Oh, my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing.
my hands and praise you again and again cause all that I have is a hallelujah hallelujah and I know it's not much but I've nothing else fit for a king cause all that
you pray with me? <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us here tonight, even with all the chaos going on in the world. Lord, I ask you to open our hearts to soak in the message that Brian has prepared for us. Amen. Is there the scripture somewhere for me to read, or am I just making it up as I go? Wow, so cool. Okay. It's actually not on the TV, so I'm going to come. Oh, gosh, I'm going to come over here. <laughs> All right, our scripture reading. No, that's okay. I'll read the screen, unless you want me to read the Bible. Okay, I'm going to read the screen because that font's bigger. Hi, guys. So our scripture reading for tonight comes from the book of James, chapter 2. Um, it is my brothers and sisters, um, do with your acts of favoritism really do you, hang on. I'm so sorry, y'all. So tonight's reading is from James, chapter 2. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in... And if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? The word of God for the people of God. Amen. So we've been going through this uh, journey, this journey of, of discipleship, this journey uh, uh, of looking at the mirror and saying, who are we um, as Christians, as disciples, and what does that mean out in this world? The past couple of weeks, we kind of look at, looked at, um, you know, maybe some of the things that the world puts on us, um, but then what Christ calls us to, right? Uh, hate versus love, um, selfishness uh, versus selflessness, um, and tonight, um, we look um, at, at uh, this word called partiality. James is the study that we're doing with adults uh, on Wednesday nights when we have college Bible study in here. I lead this adult study across the street. And uh, we have uh, people from all different kind of generations. Uh, they all have different thought processes on all these things. And this is kind of uh, the scripture that hit me because... Um, of a couple different different reasons, um, of a couple of ways that this world really puts us um, into boxes, right, um, and makes us judge people, um, uh, uh, judge people uh, by by just the way they look or what they wear or, or or where they come from and all those things. So when we look up at partiality and and in Greek, um, the word actually uh, in Greek re says receiving the face, like judging on face value. Looking at someone when they first come in uh, and saying, uh, I already know who you are. I don't need to hear your story. I don't need to hear where you come from. I don't hear, need to hear anything that's going on with you. Uh, I have already made my judgment, and that is set in stone. And it kind of reminded me of the story, uh, the story that I heard uh, in, when I was in college. And it was uh, of this uh, church that uh, one day this church came in and they were really excited they were going to get a new pastor, um, but they also uh, realized that they got a new parking lot friend, right? Um, and this guy uh, was uh, homeless and he, uh, that he was in ragged clothes and all these things and he was begging for money and people were like, no, we're not going to give you any money, go get a job. Um, and, and they completely shunned him in their own church parking lot. Right, and then they all uh, in their suits went into church, um, and they, uh, the service started, and they were waiting for like their new pastor um, to get there. And this homeless guy uh, started walking up the middle aisle, and, and people started talking and like, what is this guy doing? Where does he think he's going? Uh, he steps, uh, uh, he goes, starts to step up the stairs uh, to get to the front of the church, and even some of the guys like start to move towards him um, to stop him. And he turns around um, and he says, "Hey, my name is Reverend So and So. I'm your new pastor here, right?" And, and some people were so embarrassed that they got up and left immediately. And I've heard this story over and over again. And I've tried to look it up, um, you know, and, and can't really find, like, where it actually originates from, if it's, it's, if it's a true story or what. But, but when we look at this partiality, uh, how often we do this by the way people just look. 
the more I dig into the story, the more um, I, f- I kept on finding this, uh, this, this uh, study out of Princeton. In 1970, uh, Princeton, Princeton's theological school um, did a little study. They took um, all their students and they said, hey, we're going to learn about the Good Samaritan. And they sat down and they said, uh, we, we, they taught the lesson, they, they learned it, um, they really dug into scripture, dug into these things, and uh, they split the groups up into three different groups, and one was, uh, you have no time, one was, you have little time, and one was, you have all the time in the world, right? So they, they looked at this, these students, and they said, hey, you actually, now that you know it, right, you have to go give a presentation across uh, campus, um, but you have no time to, like, you have to be there five minutes ago. And they sent these students across campus, not knowing that they were just going to another classroom, uh, that they weren't going to present anything. But along the way, they had another student um, laying down, coughing in pain, writhing um, on campus that they had to walk right past. So they did this. They did this to each student. Uh, each student uh, either walk past or stop to help. And in the hurried group, right, the, the, the group that was like, you're supposed to be there five minutes ago, um, only 10% of them stopped. And the next group, um, it was um, 45%. And in the last group, the group that had all the time in the world, 65%. These two stories, when, when, I, when I tried to research the first one and the second one came, um, it splits partiality for me. Right? Because sometimes we have partiality of face value. Uh, uh, this is this is what we read. This is who we see. This is what we do, and it's and it's us looking at other people. But the second story reminds me uh, that sometimes we put other things in front of people as well. Right? James is writing about partiality. He's writing about um, uh, the, he's frustrated at, at the Pharisees. He's frustrated um, at the people that are around him um, because he's seeing that people that are worthy um, are, are only people that are wealthy. And, and that's not okay, right? Because he is trying to get through um, that we are called into this world where um, we are all accepted uh, by this amazing God. Yet he's looking at the church, he's looking at people, he's looking at, at people who think they are following God and saying, um, and giving out favor to those who they can get something from and those that they deem less worthy to sit under their feet. And we see that in our society all the time. We see rich and poor. We see in and out, we see friends and strangers. In and out. I think that's what the church struggles with. Because we come to worship, we come to the space that has four walls, and, and, and we buy into it. We have, we have this, this thought process that if I uh, come here enough, if I show up enough, um, that this is, is mine, and I get to own it. And then someone new comes in or someone from a different walk of life or someone that believes different or someone that uh, maybe has said something bad to us or maybe someone uh, that has frustrated us or maybe a a roommate of ours and, and they come into our space and they say, no, 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 this is ours. You need to go somewhere else. And the church has this history. Right, this history of, of looking at James's words, hearing the scripture and saying, no, 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 we, we still struggle with this. We see this uh, throughout the week. When, when different people come um, into our space here, it's our space. And we get struggle, we struggle uh, with, with people uh, maybe just taking a coffee to go. Or maybe just taking a Coke and walking out. What James is calling us to is this impartiality that, that there is no us and them, that there's us and we, and we are part of this body of God that we should all be supporting one another. And if we're not hearing this word and we're not doing what it says, then we are broken. We are breaking this law that, that has been around 
forever. Partiality. Partiality of worthiness. Who is worthy and who is not worthy? See, the Pharisees, they took the law and put it above the people. They thought the law was the most, the most uh, worthy thing that they could ever do. They can check as many boxes as possible. And if you did that, you were worthy. But if you were lame, if you were sick, if you were blind, if you needed anything, you were not. Because you couldn't check the boxes. They put law above God. And when they put law above God, they worshiped the law. What James is saying is that we need to look around. We need to see the people for what they are, God's creation. And when they walk into our lives and when we walk past them, say, you are actually worthy of everything that I am worthy of. Sometimes we put our own schedules over people. Sometimes we're so busy with school, so busy uh, with grades, so busy uh, with, with just regular day life, work, whatever it is, um, and, and we are the students on that Princeton campus. We walk past someone that is obviously hurting. We walk past someone that is obviously in need of, 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 of God stepping in uh, with flesh on. And we have these moments, but we say, ah, oh, man, I really have to get to class. Ah, oh, man, I really need to get home and study. Oh, I don't know how much this is going to take from me, so I'm just going to ignore it and walk past it. Christian status over people. We are so holy, we look down upon you. This is something that the church um, has always struggled with. You know, Stanley Hauerwas is, is a theologian that I loved uh, I loved to read, and he's one of those guys, I think I've talked about him before, that he wanted to take Bibles out of churches, right? Because all Christians do with Bibles is they stack them on top of each other um, to stand on on them to look down on people, um, or they take it um, to beat someone over the head with it. Worthiness. Instead of opening it and reading those words and looking um, at ourselves, we use it to push people away. James isn't a light book. James is five chapters, uh, and, and, and this is uh, uh, maybe the easiest digestible that James can be. But I think it's so pertinent to where we are in life right now. It's so pertinent to where we are as a society, um, as a people of God, as a people that are listening to Scripture every single week and going out and living our lives, hoping that we are being transformed by Christ that we are seeing the scripture and it's transforming us. And we're not falling into the same pitfalls. That we're looking at this kingdom um, of God and that we are living this kingdom life. That our status isn't in this world, it's in God's kingdom that he calls us to. James goes on to uh, verse 8. And it says, you do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. This royal law. That's been around since the beginning. Right? That, that when they sat down and they came out of Egypt and, and they, they started building um, this people, this people of God, these Israelites um, started figuring out who God was and building this relationship with them. And God sat down and said, you know what, you're going to love me with everything that you have, your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Um, and you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself because I am your Lord. And we messed up. 
And we continue to mess up and we continue to mess up until God says, you know what, I guess I got to come down. I got to show you how much uh, I, I, I believe in you, I have hope in you. I want to show you how much I love you. And Christ comes down, he says, he said to him, you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You should love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two commandments shall hang the law of the prophets. Over and over and over and over and over again. In this book right here. We are called, we are told, we are implored, we, we, we are urged to get rid of this world status, to get rid of, of these boxes that we have put people in and, and, and to accept and to love and show grace and compassion and to be a part of everyone's lives that walks through these doors or that we walk past through on campus. James is urging us that we have an opportunity, that we have an opportunity to show mercy instead of judgment. James warns us. He tells us, so speak and so act as those who are, who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. We have been on this journey, this journey of looking uh, at who we are as a people, as we, who we are as a person in this program, as who we are as a Christian, as who we are as a United Methodist, as who we are as a fighting Texas Aggie, as who we are as, as just a person here connecting to God. And what James is saying, say you have to show mercy. That we can't be, uh, that we have to be impartial. That whoever walks through our doors deserves the love of Christ. Because we have received the love of Christ. Let's pray. Dearly Father, I just want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for this time. I want to thank you for this space. Lord, we know we struggle. We know that it's not um, just one of us that, that's bearing all of this, that it's all of us. But Lord, remind us that we are called to so much more. Remind us that the hope in you is that we get to share why you are so important to us. That the grace that we can pour out is only because you have poured out grace. That the love that you have poured out is, is so filling, Lord, that it overflows. That we could go out into this world and give it to others. Lord, again, I just want to thank you for this time and this space and the scripture that is challenging. Help us tomorrow. Help us tonight. And still it in our lives. Help us tomorrow wake up and remember the scripture and say that when we walk through campus, that when we go to class, that whatever we do tomorrow, we see all people as your people. That we see everybody as a child of God. Amen. I invite you to stand with me as we sing our last song. Oh, the weight of His glory Oh, the wonder of His grace The power of salvation That has pulled me from the grave This hope is not empty And forever He will reign And He won't be put to shame Oh, my soul Sing to the God of the ages.
riches Sing to the Lord of creation Sing His praise again Oh my soul Sing like the heavens are waiting Roar like an army of angels Sing His praise again From the moment of rescue I have never been the same But His love took me captive my sin was washed away Now I stand here forgiven And I know that I am saved And I won't be put to shame Oh my soul Sing to the God of the ages Sing to the Lord of creation Sing His praise again Oh my soul Sing like the heavens are waiting Roar like an army of angels Sing His praise again Remember how our God has never failed Never failed us Remember that His name will make a way Will make a way From the cross to the grave He is risen and He reigns Praise the Lord Sing His praise again And remember how our God has never failed Never failed us Remember that His name will make a way He'll make a way From the cross to the grave He is risen and He reigns Praise the Lord Sing His praise again Oh my Sing to the God of the ages Sing to the Lord of creation Sing His praise again Oh my soul Sing like the heavens are waiting Roar like an army of angels Sing His praise again Oh my soul Sing to the God of the ages Sing to the Lord of creation Sing His praise again Oh my soul Sing like the heavens are waiting Roar like an army of angels Sing His praise again Sing His praise again Oh, oh, oh. Sing His praise again Oh, oh, oh. Sing His praise again Thank you again for coming out to worship tonight. Uh, our, our next big thing is next Thursday. Uh, we're having Friendsgiving in this space. We're going to have a little bit of a uh, worship service, uh, and then we're going to have a meal. We're going to have, uh, we're going to smoke a turkey, fry a turkey, and then whatever sides you would like to bring. Um, so I think Tori sent that out on our group me. Uh, if you're not on our group me, sign up for it. If you're, if you're like, I hate group me, uh, join the club. Um, just tell me what you're going to bring uh, so we can sign you up for it. Um, that's next Thursday in the Annex. And then next Saturday, we have Parking Lot Fundraiser. If you've never been a part of that, um, it's a blast. Um, but we have it. Well, okay, fantastic. Yeah, thank you for saying that. No. Uh, so uh, I know that uh, the Meet Men, uh, Jacob Mathis, is in charge of that. Um, they want to do like a big smoking thing that they're going to smoke some uh, food uh, for everybody that parks in our parking lot um, and our guest lot and the Wesley lot and all that stuff. Um, so if you want to come to that, um, that's Friday night um, into the next morning. We're selling spots from 8 a.m. Um, until game time. So if you, there will be more information about that uh, to sign up for that and stuff like that uh, if you can. Um, but as you go from this place... Uh, as every week, wherever you go, if you go to Northgate tonight, uh, if you go uh, over to Wesley tonight, if you go home to study, um, if you're heading out of town, wherever you go, you are called. You are called to be impartial, to see everybody as a child of God, to see everybody as worthy of the love of Christ. So go knowing that God goes with you. 
God goes before you to show you the way, beside you to befriend you, behind you to encourage you, above you to watch over you, and within you always to give you peace. Amen. Amen.